Do you occasionally need to record your screen, but OBS is a bit too complicated, or maybe it's putting more load on your CPU than it can handle? In this video, we're gonna take a look at GPU screen recorder for Linux. It is useful for Nvidia cards right now only, though they are working on AMD cards. Well, let's take a look at this particular tool and see what we can do with it. I'll have a link to this in the description along with the, my article, of course. And it's just a, what this is trying to be is a very simple screen recorder that's gonna have minimal impact on system performance. And it's gonna be using the GPU only. The idea that this was based upon was Shadow Play for NVIDIA on Windows. And so if you were a fan of that software and you haven't really found a replacement on Linux, this is a good option for you. I actually found out about this relatively early on, but I wanted to give it some more time to mature and also just get more information out there about it. So one important note here is this only works on X11. So if you're a Wayland user at this point, this will not work for you. As far as I see, Wayland is not on the changes here at the bottom. That's not on the to-do list. Right now, one of the big to-dos is AMD and Intel support. So yeah, right now it's, it's only NVIDIA cards and it is only for X11. So as you keep scrolling down the page here, there's more information. One of the things that they offer here is a performance information. So in their example, they were recording Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 4K. The FPS uh, went from 30 to 7 when using OBS Studio and NVENC. When using GPU Screen Recorder though, the FPS remains at 30. Here they have some various installation methods. Personally, I have went ahead and got the FlatHub version, which is the GTA GUI version. Uh, I'm going to switch over to that tab momentarily. But it does talk about dependencies and things like that if you don't want to go with FlatHub and you want to go a different route, and as well as some how to use it if you're going to use the command line version. And then it has a demo and FAQ and some things like that. But yeah, ultimately it's like one of the big questions down here that it talks about is OBS with NVENC and the OBS with the NVFBC. And it talks a lot about how OBS ultimately has to talk to the CPU because it doesn't always, it isn't able to fully utilize the GPU with the setup. At the bottom, they have a couple of FAQs, like how is this different from using OBS with NVENC and OBS NVFBC plugin. And ultimately, this is things where with Linux, OBS cannot use the GPU properly. And so that's what this program is designed to do. If we go over to the GTK one, this is the GTK front end for it. And it's really very similar to the previous page. and you need to install, if you're going to install these separately, you need to install uh, GPU screen recorder first and then install the GTK front end. But if you install the flat pack, it's going to give you the GTK front end without going through both installs. So that would be my recommendation to try out. Let's take a look at the program itself. So here I've went ahead and launched GPU screen recorder. As you can see, the first option is a record area. You have monitor, which is my current monitor that you're looking at. You'll see my second monitor that is uh, OBS is running on right now. So in addition to the single monitors, you could go all monitors with also a direct mode where there is a VRR and uh, NV FBC. You can also pick a focus window. So I believe that would just, we're gonna try it out momentarily, but I believe this would just be ultimately where it would try to record the currently focused window and then window. And if you do window, you have to select the window that it needs to be. So you click on you click on this and then you have to actually pick where it is. So if I go over here and click in Reaper, it's gonna figure out that I want to record in Reaper. That is what it would look like. I could record GPU screen recorder itself. If you do want to record a window, it's going to ask you about area size or it's going to give you the area size. You can tweak that, I believe, to crop out stuff. But if I choose monitor zero, the next thing it's going to ask you for is an audio input. So if you do want to record the microphone or your game sounds, you can do that. That is how we go about doing that. So if I wanted to actually record my game sounds with it, I would go monitor M4 headphones, monitor out. And then video quality it can be very high, high or ultra and it recommends very high for recording, high for streaming, and then you also get to select your FPS, and then you can click stream. If you click stream, you get an option of YouTube, Twitch, and custom, and then you can enter a stream key, 
If you click record, it's going to ask you where you want to record the video and then what format you want it in. Uh, note that MKV, if you crash, MKV actually will still work. MP4 and FLV, I believe, do not. And uh, there is a note up at the top here to press Alt F1 to start and stop recording. And then last is replay. And once again, you can press Shift Alt F1 to start and stop, stop replay. And then Alt F1 to save. And it's going to ask you where you want to save your replays. It's going to also ask the container and then the replay time. So I believe this is 30 seconds. So if we wanted to increase this to 60 seconds, we could. Let's switch over to some games and see how they record. I want to try to record something at 1080p. I want to try to record something at 4K. I'll be talking to you throughout those, but I won't be back on camera for that because ultimately I need to close OBS while I'm running this. I'm going to bring up the settings that I ended up using. I ended up recording this at 1440p and the monitor setting. Uh, I think there is a bug right now for a window. So that could be related to some of the issues I was having. But when I tried to record Final Fantasy VII Remake here at 4K, I was getting like, I would measure the frames in frames per minute. Like it was that bad. Uh, the, the recording was that slow. It would be, literally be 10 seconds or so between frames or something like that. So I think what was going on is my, my GPU is just not able to handle playing the game at 4K and also recording the game at 4K. It's an NVIDIA 3060, so it's entirely possible. I'm actually a little surprised it uh, played at 4K as well as it did. But uh, anyway, after bumping the uh, monitor resolution down to 1440p and the game resolution down to 1440p, I was able to record this. Uh, the game seemed to run pretty smoothly on my end, and then the recording seemed to do pretty well. Ultimately, I think this turned out pretty cool. This looks like this could be a really solid option for people that are wanting to just record their screen and don't need to include a webcam or don't need to, you know, add something else in. You could even, you know, go ahead and add your microphone. You can add multiple audio sources. Uh, a couple things that I think are missing. One of the biggest ones right now to me is the ability to change the shortcuts for recording, replay, etc. Because right now, for example, there's a setting called focused window. And what that does is it lets you record whatever window is focused when the recording starts. The problem is you can't click start recording because then you just record the window of the application itself. And obviously that's probably not what you want for, a, uh, for that. But Alt F1 in Plasma is the same key combination that brings up your start menu. Because if you don't, haven't looked in Plasma deeply, Alt F1 is what represents the meta key or super key. And so unless you've rebound that at a, you know, a system-wide level to something else, Alt F1 is going to be a global shortcut and therefore not able to be used as a shortcut for this application. And, you know, it's entirely possible that I could, maybe I need to go into the, the settings. Maybe I can find it in the shortcut settings and I'll do that before I, you know, post this and see if ultimately I could, you know, set those there. But there's just no way to do so from in the app. And so the, the focused window, at least as far as I could tell, is not an option for me right now. The other things that I would say that people might want on this are the ability to potentially downscale their recording so that they're, you know, that maybe they're playing in 4K and they're recording at 1080p. As far as I can tell, there's not a way to do that. You would have to downscale the footage after the fact. I will say that the actual size of the files are pretty solid. I'm looking at the comparison. I have about 15 minutes of footage recorded in OBS for this video, and I have about 15 minutes of footage recorded from Final Fantasy VII Remake. They're very similar sizes, despite Final Fantasy VII Remake being at uh, 1440p and my normal recording being at 1080p. I believe the file for the OBS recording, about 15 minutes, is 500 megabytes, and the file for the Final Fantasy VII Remake is uh, at 1440p, 60 frames per second is around 800 megabytes, which, you know, considering you're going, you know, at a level up when it comes to resolution, that's not bad. I think that's a pretty solid, pretty solid uh, amount. And, you know, for 15 minutes of footage, uh, I think it was, like I say, right around 800 megabytes. That is not too terrible at all, um, considering 
the amount of time people are typically going to be recording. And you could always use flashback mode and record, you know, the past five minutes or something like that. I haven't tested it out with longer replay modes, so it's possible that that's something that's an issue. This took a little bit longer than I expected because I just had to try it so many times and I had to, you know, I, I watched the Final Fantasy remake opening cutscene like, I don't know, five or six times at least <laughs> during the uh, process of getting these settings to cooperate. And, you know, then I would review the video and it would be literally one frame every 10 seconds or something like that. That was unfortunate. But ultimately, I mean, especially once you kind of dial in the settings that are going to work for you, this program seems to be pretty solid. Definitely an option if you don't want to put so much on your CPU or you just want something a bit simpler and you have an NVIDIA card. That is a key limiting factor right now is the NVIDIA card, but yeah, I see promising things for this. I'm hoping that we'll get some more updates for it and it can be a very useful program going forward. And that's it for GPU screen recorder. Hopefully this is something that can be useful to you as you try to record gameplay footage or something like that, or if you just want something simpler than OBS, because it can be a little intimidating when it's talking about all the scenes and stuff like that, I get it. So, I'm really curious to see where this goes. I'm curious to see if other software potentially will adapt into this. For me personally, it's not gonna work as well for my channel. If I was doing more like video game recordings, then maybe it would work better. But since I'm doing, you know, the camera and the scenes and all that, OBS is the better option for me. I do wish I could take better advantage of my GPU though. So fingers crossed that we'll actually get some better support on Linux with the NVIDIA and AMD and Intel GPUs when it comes to OBS. And I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time.